Over the past four weeks, I've been teaching you on the fundamental teachings that every Christian must know. Because the Bible says that we must always teach again those fundamentals. So we look at the need for salvation. And in that we look at how salvation is necessary or why to all mankind. Then we looked into the topic, the benefits of salvation. Now that you are born again, what are the benefits available to you as a Christian? Then we looked at why baptism by immersion and what does baptism by immersion stands for? Why do we not sprinkle water on people's heads? Why should we baptize them by immersion? And we discovered that the first answer is that Jesus was baptized by immersion. And everybody who follows him must also obey the command, which he said we should baptize people just like him. But then we looked at the significance of immersion baptism, which we saw quite very detailed in the book of Romans 6. And then, having looked at the significance of baptism, we spoke about what do you expect when you come out of the water. Because when you go into the water to be baptized, you must have an expectation. And when I was teaching you about that, I taught you and uh, admonished you with some people in this church who have experienced such manifestation. Because when Jesus came out of the water, the Bible says the heavens opened and the Spirit of God came upon him like a dove. We have had people who were baptized by a mansion and they got baptized in the Holy Spirit right in the water. We have seen people who were sick. When we dip them in the water, they come out healed. So that you will not, those of you who are to be baptized now, will not go into the baptism without a, an expectation. Of course, let me say that baptism now has been booked for 18th of October. So those of you who are the candidates or anyone who, is, who gets born again within now and that time, we'll baptize them together on the 18th of October. So, and of course, we talked about the significance of immersion, which the Bible teaches in identification with Jesus' death and certainty of resurrection with him. Now, the last topic I began to teach among you is the new life in Christ. In new life in Christ, we looked at the purpose for which Christ has saved us from the book of Romans 8, which tells us that everyone that has been predestined, who have been called, have been predestined to be conformed to the image. So we began to look at the, 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 um, the factors of transformation that takes you and I from where we are to like Jesus Christ. Now, that is what we continue today. God's people on earth must know everyone that is born again have been programmed by God to become like Christ. And when we are born again, therefore, the reason why God did not kill us after salvation is because heaven is not the only thing. Our ultimate aim is heaven, but yet we live on earth. And there is an assignment for us on earth. For that assignment to be fulfilled, we have to be reprogrammed. And I showed you <clears throat> how every Christian can become a walking Jesus on the streets of every, every nation. Not talking about calling now, because the calling is different from being programmed to become like Christ. Everyone born again is being programmed by God to become like Jesus. So we look at our transformation, and then we looked at the fact that righteousness comes by faith not by law. In that lecture, we looked at the error in the church of God, which came because of the ignorance of the Old Testament. And I took you very deeply into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The disparity, what is the New Testament in relative to the Old Testament? And I showed you about some errors that have been perpetrated in some among some sects in Christendom, like generational curses, and we saw it in the Bible that it does not exist for those who are born again. 
For the Bible says, if a man is therefore is in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation, old things are passed away, all things have become new. And we explore that with several scriptures to show you that generational curses is outdated. It does not exist for anyone born again. We looked at the doctrine of deliverance, and I showed you how Jesus said, if the Son therefore set you free, you are free indeed. Then I help you to understand the reason why all this mess happened in, this, in the church. Why some people still glory in the Old Testament. And we find a solution in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, chapter 3, from verse 14. We look very deeply into it, for the Bible says that whenever the Old Testament is read, veil remains. It is in Christ that the veil is removed. Then we went into Galatians chapter 3, where we saw the analysis from verse 24, that the Old Testament was put in charge, in place, to lead us to Christ. And 25 says, now that Christ has come, we are no longer under the law. Then, at last, I took you to Romans chapter 8, verse 13, which tells you now that now that the new covenant has been given, the old statutes have become obsolete. So, therefore, we look very much into the, the provision that God has given to us because of the death of Jesus, which has been neglected by a lot of believers, so that we can begin to operate in the fullness of the provision God has given to us. But you know today, very briefly, I want to introduce you to new life in Christ. New life in Christ. My, my discussion with you today will be very brief because I want to just prepare you for the Holy Ghost conference which we start on Tuesday. Now, in looking at the new life in Christ, we will look at your, your, your liberty, the believer's freedom. Believer's freedom. Now, can you look at your sermon notes because we are going to do some tests now. I'm sure Cathedral will want me to test them. I can't hear you. You didn't expect that because I've been glued to my pulpit. Now, what does the book of 2 Corinthians 5.17 tell us? Someone tell me, or some people tell me. If a man is a new, old things, all things, all right then. So if a man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation or creature. Now we recognize very clearly in the scripture that what you are in is what determines who you are. You may come to church and you are not born again. You might have come to church for 20 years and you have no salvation at all. The evidence of salvation is that anyone that is born again is a new creation or a new species or a new creature, you may call it. And the Bible says the old has gone. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Now, if you read the next verse, it says that all this is from Christ who reconciled us unto God. Now, if we have such a liberty in God, then do we think, therefore, that freedom should be abused? Do we think we should abuse the freedom? Come on, let's speak. Okay. If somebody died for you to leave, all right, and he gave you an instruction that, look, I'm dying so that you can be this. Should you just take the liberty of his death for granted and do anything you like? No. So the book of Romans chapter 6 tells us. If we look at the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Shall we read it together? That scripture says, what shall we say in response or response to what God has done? Shall Christians go on sinning and expect grace of salvation to remain? Now, what, what is the answer? Come on now. Now, Jesus paid with his life for our salvation. 
we were wretched sinners. All right? We did whatever we wanted before we got saved. Now that someone died for that salvation and paid the price with his life, is it ideal for us who have been delivered from sin to go back into our old life and continue to live like that? Is it fair? Oh, come on. Give me cathedral. No. All right, then. I hope your microphone is working to capture their voices. You are being recorded by men or ladies and gentlemen on camera, but you are being recorded by angels as well. This record will fade away. After a generation, they won't find it again. But the record that is invincible remains for eternity. I say, do we agree that a Christian should not continue to sin? Come on now. Yes, All right. We cannot continue to sin because someone died for it. We cannot waste his death by continuing to sin. So therefore, let me reread that scripture and put it into human codes. That scripture says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may abound or may increase? What does the next verse say? Come on now. Say it again. Say it again. Can I make you understand that? Why would the Bible say by no means? It means by no means. Either you think your philosophical brain who think otherwise is not applicable. Either you think that your self-righteousness who think otherwise is not applicable. Either you think you are so intellectual that you may apply some theories to try to think otherwise, it's not applicable. There is no means available to man to dispute this fact. If you say you are born again, therefore, what happens to you is that you will hate sin. If anybody claims to be born again, and he still loves to be what he used to be, this scripture tells you and I that he is not saved at all. He must not make a mistake to die. If anybody claims to be a Christian and the life of holiness is a problem for you, you are not born again at all. You are not saved at all. You have not given your heart to Christ. You are thinking about doing so. Because the evidence of salvation is the inability of a man to continue in his whole life. And I'll give you an example. If you were an armed robber, who kill human beings and, and steal their, 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 loot their, their labor. And you now come to church and you get saved. Tomorrow, can you go back and kill another man? Come on now, let's speak together. Now, if you used to be a prostitute and they know you in Soho as the king of prostitutes and you got saved on Sunday, will you go back to Soho tomorrow and just be free to keep on prostitution? Come on now, let's speak together. Now, if somebody is living in fornication, that is you are not married and you are sleeping with somebody else and you came and you gave your life to Jesus, will you be able to go back out of that service and do the same thing you have been doing before? No. Come on now, let's speak together. If somebody is a fraudster who took people to make his livelihood, somebody who is a very evil person who rejoices when he cheats people and he lies to them and robs them and he came to church on Sunday and he gave his life to Jesus, can that man on Monday go back to his joints? No. Come on now, let's speak together now. So therefore, you cannot continue in sin and grace will abound. By no means can that happen. Therefore, if anybody comes to church and still delight in those things, you are not born again at all. Don't make a mistake to die. The evidence of salvation is a transformation of inward man. On Friday in New Cross, I was saying something to you. God told me to tell the church, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked or sit in the seat of scoffers, nor stand in the ways of sinners. If somebody claims to be born again and he sits in the seat of scoffers, he's not born again. Because you will hate that seat. It is a seat you used to sit before. You used to love assassinating people's character and lying about them and walking on the lies you are given, developing lies until you have hypertension, 
Now that you are born again, the peace of Christ, the Spirit of God will stop you from that. If you find yourself comfortable with mockers, you find yourself comfortable with sinners, you find yourself comfortable in this, in, in the, in the, in the, with pajoras, then you have not seen salvation. You mustn't make a mistake to die. A dog goes back to his vomit. A, look at, look at, these people are putting on white. All right? If they ask you for a pen and you, 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 you show a ball pen to them and the, 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 the tip of the ball pen is soaked with ink, what would they do? Reject it. Because they know if they can touch it, it will stain their white clothes, it will be evident. Now, the reason is because there is something inside their spirit, in their heart, that knows that I cannot accept this because the way I'm dressed. So is the spirit of holiness that comes from the Father. If anybody comes to church and you find yourself doing what God says don't do, you love to sit in the seat of scoffers, you are not born again. Don't be deceived. There are many people who sit in the pews of churches every Sunday who are not going to heaven. Now, if, if the Bible says, blessed is the man who works in the council of the wicked, which means curse is the man who works in the council of the wicked. If the Bible says that blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of scoffers, it means curse is the man who sits in the seat of scoffers. If the Bible says blessed is the man who does not uh, uh, walk in the ways of sinners in the seat of scoffers or, 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 or um, uh, stand in the of sinners, blessed is the man who walks not in the way of sinners, nor sit in seat of scoffers, nor stand in the way of the wicked, and his delight is in the law of God. So if somebody does not delight in the law of God, he's cursed. You know, remember, how many of you were in New Cross on Friday? You know when we finished service, the Holy Spirit said to me to warn the church. Now, let me say this to you. This is what the warning says. The Holy Spirit said to me to tell the church, God said, I'm faithful God. I bless my people. But, tell my people, as time endures, seed time and harvest time will not cease. And say to my people, the reason why many of them are not operating the blessing and are miserable is not because I didn't bless them, but it's because... A good number of times, some Christians think evil against others, and when you think evil against somebody else, you have sown a seed, and you will reap fruit of evil. Now, the Lord said, I should tell you, when somebody, when somebody rejoices, and you are unhappy, you have sown a seed, because God is the one that brought the joy, and you have directly waged war against God, so, you will reap the fruits. And God said to me, why should a Christian not be happy that another Christian is successful? What ought you be? Are you not supposed to be people who will help even the Gentile, those who are not believers, to be successful so that they may see the fruit of God in you who wants to help them so that they will give their life to the God that you profess? How can a Christian, I mean, Fall a prey of Satan. And the Lord said to me, in the household of faith, a good number of those who profess me do not know me. And I warned the church. Many years ago, you sow a seed. It takes a long time to reap the harvest. But in this season of God, as you sow, harvest triggers. So if you sow unto to the flesh, the Bible says you will reap corruption. If you sow unto the spirit, you will life. Listen, let me say something to you. Before we came to the house of God, we were pajoras, we were mockers, we were sinners. How can we be saved from such and yet be what we were saved from? Think about it. There is a devil somewhere whose intention is to destroy lives of people. He doesn't, he, he doesn't respect what you believe. It is, if you can get control of your thoughts, you are gone. Therefore, you cannot continue 
a life of sin and expect the grace of mercy. It says, by no means. Now, let me say something to you. There are a good number of people who say they are Christian, they are always going for deliverance and all stuff. It's because they are wicked people. They are wicked. They refuse to repent of their wickedness. And demons is attracted by wickedness. Demons are the ravagers who are created by God to work havoc. Whenever the judgment of God is upon a nation, demons just have their free will there. Whenever the judgment of God is upon a people, devil will just, you know, set loose there because God had pronounced his judgment. Or the conduct of that man had triggered judgment. For those who are in the household of faith, how could someone identify with Jesus, go to where Jesus would not go? Come on now. You know, I told you about uh, the games that people buy to their children. If you are listening to me and you are one of those who buy games for your children, let me tell you what has happened. You have just introduced your children to demons. A video was sent to me, which I watched yesterday till about 2.30 a.m. In this church, I've been telling you about when God took me to heaven in 1999, all the things that he revealed to me about this planet, which a good number of those things I told you began to happen. Some people told me I was stupid, but today I'm back in England, they are facing it. Listen to me, therefore, you were here when God told me that the economy of the world will crash in two weeks and the date it will crash. And I told you to sell your stock. And those of you who sold your stock made money. And it crashed that day. I was in the midst of ministers yesterday. And we were, I was telling them about this end time church. And one of the ministers mentioned that, look, we all, have, we all are guilty of what is happening. And I stood up and said, I'm not guilty. Alfred Williams is not guilty because I do not preach a message to you so that you come to church. Listen to me. I want those who come under my voice to make up their mind they are going to heaven. For you to be able to make up your mind, you must know the truth. And you must know the lies and the counterfeit. In this end time, people like myself are few. We are few in the sense that how many people has Jesus appeared to? Who man poop it on Sunday? We are the watchmen of the church. In our lips reside the word of truth. Uncompromised. If God has sent me a mission of 100 million pounds and I have only 12 members in my church, they are fortunate millionaires. In this church, we don't spend time looking for money. Have you had anybody stand on the pulpit here before and spend 30 minutes asking for money? Why will you spend minutes to preach the gospel? It cannot happen here because we are interested in the soul of man. That is what Jesus died for. The truth has to be preached. Those who are sons of salvation will follow. That is the position. We cannot continue to sin and expect grace to abound. By no means. Run from the madding crowd. Every trap of Satan that he set, run away from it. What is a Christian doing in the garden of witches? Backbiters are the same as witches. I will show you in the Bible. Those who wish others evil, is it Holy Ghost that make you wish people evil? So you belong to the devil if you do that. Those who do not celebrate the success of other people, you belong to the devil because he hates the success that God has given people. Are you not supposed to put your back on the ground for your brother to rise up? If you find it difficult, you are not born again. Let me show you this. Let's see the book of 1 Corinthians 10, 23. It says everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is constructive. Listen to me. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Do you know what God is saying here? Stop getting yourself into activities that are not of benefit to you. Look, in London, in the UK, eh? 
This is Pastor Tayo. He's been with me for over 20 years, 20, 24 years or something like that. Pastor Debbie, where are you? That is Pastor Debbie. She has been with me for 28 years or so. Hmm? 27 years. Pastor Adisa, 29 years. Let me say this to you. As from these people, my message has never changed. Do you know why? I'm going to die sometime. Then I will report to the one I profess I represent. He will, he will ask me of your blood, your blood, your blood. And if I had lied to you, I will have eternal shame before the whole world. But if you lie to me, so you will have eternal shame. For you and I not to have eternal shame, I testify about the one that is faithful. So that you and I can be bound to faithfulness. And everyone in this country knows Apostle Williams that he will not compromise. I was in a meeting yesterday. In that meeting, a former armed robber who were part of the pioneers of armed robbery in Nigeria, now a preacher. I was with him. And I began to share the story of his life. Those of you who are Nigerians will remember Oyenusi. He was the driver of Oyenusi. He was part of the gang. The first armed robber in Nigeria, formerly in Nigeria, we only have a more Jaguda, pickpockets. And we know the compound of Mr. Jaguda. Oh, yes. I lived around the area. If somebody picks steals, we go to Mr. Jaguda, he will give you back your loot, your loot, your loot. Suddenly, arm robbery came in, and the man who pioneered arm robbery was shot. I was there when they shot him because they brought him to the public to be killed. And the man said, if you kill me, my blood will grow many thieves, many robbers. And they shot him, bullet will not go to his body. I saw it. I'm not thinking of what I'm saying. But you know what? So they brought him out of the, of the stake. They tied him. They broke his neck and then they poured. Even they were breaking his neck, he couldn't. They poured chemical on his body to eat him up. But you see, this young man escaped. So he wasn't killed. When they got him, they jailed him. Ten years in his jail. I will bring him here to come and share with you. Ten years in his jail. He got saved. And this is what he said. He said when he got saved, he came out of prison, now born again. He went to churches. Once they hear that he is your me Williams, they will say, sorry, no place for you. His family rejected him. So as an ex inmate nobody wants him in their house because they can't trust him. Nobody wants him in their office because they still believe he's a robber. He decided to go to the president of Nigeria at the time and went to the Dam Barracks, which is the White House or 10 Downing Street. And the soldiers arrested him because he looked tattered. He said, what are you looking for? I want to speak to the president. A tattered man like you, you must be mad. And they arrested him. He tried all what he could. He said, he now said, can he, should he go back? And all the boys who were thieves, he went to them and told them about Jesus. They laughed at him as con. They said, look, you're missing down. You are a poor man. Take Money. He said, I don't want your money. They said to him that every day you come here to tell us about Jesus. Look at how wretched you are. He said all of them were in suits, lavicious lives by the loot of others. And he was now confronted by the devil with all the temptations of his past. But he said, for me to do this and sin against the Lord, I will not. Today, he sits with president of nations, I was in the meeting on, on, on his, his conference on uh, two days ago, on Thursday, where I was appointed to give an award to Kofi Annan and, uh, and uh, Ban Ki-moon. If he had compromised his faith, he would not get to where he is. If a thief decided not to compromise and face the suffering and lack, what about you who have everything in comfort? Why should we compromise? 
Think about this. Everything is permissible, but everything is not beneficial. Everything is permissible, but everything is not constructive. From today, before you say something, think about these things. Is it permissible by the Holy Spirit? Then say it. What I'm going to say, will it construct somebody else's life? Then say it. What I'm going to say, will it destroy somebody else's life? Then shut up. What I'm doing now, is it, is, some, is it something that I will give account before my maker and I cannot face God? Then don't do it. Look, if someone says to me that you have a problem in this world, anybody here who doesn't have a problem, raise your hand up. From the day you raise your hand up, that is the day you have problem. For raising your hand up, you have problem. You have problem. So we cannot say because of the tribulation I'm going through, I can legitimize sin. No, 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 no. It caused the life of God to burn us again. So I will not do everything that is permissible, what others do, that in all the permissibles, I will look for something that is beneficial. In these, I say to you, don't buy games to your children they will demonize your kids. Don't buy PlayStation. When other parents are employing teachers to train their children, you are given PlayStation. Can't you understand? They call something PlayStation. May you never end your life in the station called Play. Oh, yes. When you are playing, others are moving ahead in life. The same thing you switch on your television, two people are pretending as if they are wedding and they are family and they are doing fine in family. Go and look at them in life. They can't keep even a relationship for a year. And a Christian will sit down and say, ah, I'm learning something. Learning what? From an ungodly man. When if you spend that time reading the Bible, God will speak to you. Somebody watching horror film. Are you, are you going to tell me that horror film is from God? There is a Nigerian film. I went to Nigeria, and these people say they are Christian, uh, you know, artists, and all the film is full of Buddha priests invoking something. Satan displayed, and then at the end of it, they will, they will show a Christian prevail. The same thing Hollywood do. Somebody will carry gun to be killing people, and then the good man will, will win. Isn't it? And you call that Christian film? They are from the devil. You want to watch film? Read Ezekiel 37. You want to watch him? Read Revelations. You are not satisfied? Some people were thrown in fire. They did not roast. Read the book of Daniel. Somebody was thrown into the lions then, and he was not eaten up by lions. You want to hear, watch him? Read Nehemiah. We have enough films in the Bible. All those things are traps of Satan to waste your life. Everything is permissible, but everything is not beneficial. Look, every minute you spend on earth, you can never regain it till you die. It's gone. So if you did not do something last week, constructive to your destiny, you have just failed for last week. So what we do? Every day we make sure what we do is permissible by God and is constructive. Anything I do to you, I will stand before God. What I say behind you, it will be published in the public. Not only that, I will receive the reward of what I wish you in my heart. Do you know something? If you wish evil to people, the people you are wishing evil for, they even know what you are doing. And God is blessing them. Is it not the one who wish evil that is always going backward in life? The people they wish you will always going forward because they are not there when Satan is messing your whole mind up and you are compromising with devil and thinking about useless things to the place you can't hear God at all. Even when God shouts, you can't hear. The ears have been deafened by evil thoughts. Next week, I'll be talking to you more about that. We must not allow Satan to prevail over our lives. Can I say this to you? Look at verse 25 very quickly and I move to the last, that last scripture. If It says, eat everything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience. 
For the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Some Christians have said that you can't eat halal meat. The Bible says eat it. Whether they call it halal or lalal, it doesn't matter. Eat everything in the market. What the Bible is trying to help you to understand is a matter of conscience. The conscience of other people should not judge your conscience. As far as God is concerned, the earth is the lost and the fullness thereof. Instead of judging on conscience, let us serve God according to the scripture. Last thing this morning. The rule for holy living. I will introduce that and we will continue next Sunday. Colossians chapter, one, chapter 3, 1 to 5. Someone looks at what I'm saying and he feels that ah, this is a difficult life. It's not. The other life is the one difficult. A man can live a happy life all his life. To live happy in England is to stay from criminal offenses, isn't it? So is that difficult? Somebody provoked me so heavily. If I was living in a country of no law, I will punch him. I will teach him a lesson. But because I'm living in England, what do I do? Even if my hand rises to teach the lesson, I put it back in the pocket. Because if I teach him a lesson by punching his mouth and his teeth fall off his mouth, and the policeman really maybe was there around me at the time, then he will teach me a higher lesson by putting me in prison so that people like me should not be let loose in the marketplace. Now, is it hard to restrain yourself so that you will not be indicted by, you know, the government? It's not. We just obey the rules. So why can't we obey the rules of holiness? It's easy. To be happy is easy. To make other people happy should be your joy and your celebration. And when people you have added to their life are successful, you should celebrate. That is the way of good life. But yet, some struggle. Look at what it says here, therefore. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. What did they say? <laughs> Cathedral, are you still here? Since now that you have been raised with Christ, what did the Bible say? There are two key things I want you to not forget here. Set your heart on things above. All right? And what does it say next? I will read it. All right? Not to set your heart on offenses that people had offended you. That you are living in unforgiveness and you die of hypertension one day. Or stroke. You know the problem with people who think about those who offend them? The time you are thinking and your blood is rising and you are getting angry with yourself, the guy is somewhere enjoying himself. Isn't it? Now, do you consider that now? Who suffers? Is the one who is thinking. The Bible says you set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at what? The right hand of God. The next verse, shall we read it again now? Now, it talks about heart, things above, where Christ is seated, and mind. There is a difference between heart and mind. Your mind is the place where you think, and all thoughts go through your mind. But your heart is the place of your decision. That's where decision comes from. You may think of many things, but you don't have to decide on everything you think. Isn't it? Therefore, if your heart is set on Christ, your mind will be fruitful. If your heart is set on worldliness, your mind will be unfruitful. You know, in this church, I've given you so many rules. Not rules as you don't do this, you don't do that, but rules to help you not to be a victim of Satan. You know, we are in England, but we are not of England. We are born again. We can't talk like those who are in England. There are some slang they say in England. We can't just say it because it's ungodly. You see, there are some ways they dress in England. We can't just dress like that because it is ungodly. So therefore, 
There are some ways they work in England. We can't just work like that because it's just a God. The fact is that you ask yourself, if Jesus appeared like this, will I still call him a savior? Then you don't appear like that. Will Jesus say things like this? Then you can't say things like that. Oh. Look at this. It says, for you died. And your life is now hid where? Hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also what? Appear with him in glory. Come on now. Verse 5. Let's read it together. <laughs> Put. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you a summary of this. I want to teach you more. Because what I know from the Father, I want you to know it. And that's what we're talking about. It says in that scripture, it is your duty to kill some things in your life. So that the life of God can come through you. You are saved by God. Everything of God is life and not death. There is no death in life. When a person who has life dies in the body, he does not die. He translates to a better life. Listen to me. Put to death, therefore, what belongs to the earthly region in you. What the first thing he mentioned is what? Read it loud. Say it, let heaven hear you. <laughs> Sexual immorality, homosexuality is a sin. Bestiality is a sin. If you are married, what are you doing with another woman? If you are married, what are you sleeping with a man or a woman for? It is a sin. The Bible says a man who continues to do that, you should not even eat with him. You should cast him away from fellowship. If you know you cannot hold yourself, get married. To marry is not expensive. Go to the, to the, to the, to the, to the uh, court there. It won't cost you 120 pounds or so. so they say they call. I will not charge you to wed you here. You don't need crowd to be wedded. You only need a decision and somebody to support the decision. Go and pick anybody. He can sign for you. <laughs> oh, yes. If you want to, if you don't have money to do party, when you now have money for party, you can go and throw your party to the people. But instead of living in sin and be a victim of Satan, do the right thing. Listen to me. He says there, impurity, loss, evil desire. Did you see I've taught you that about that? Why should you desire evil? I can understand. I told you, uh, how does Apostle Williams live? Not everything I know I act upon. That's how I live a good life. I'm passing that place and somebody is talking behind that veil against me. All right? Then he comes out at the other door. Who, oh, Apostle, how are you? I will never say to him, I heard what you said. Why should I say that? If I say that, I open my heart to the devil for controversy. After all, what he said did not change my form. How many things have been said about me? I have met people in London who have come to me, and in Nigeria, who have come to me, and they were pleading. Apostle, we have said this about you. I said, don't say it again. No, we have to confess. We have to confess. Okay, call. We have said this, we have said that. We have said this and that and that. And when he finished saying all that, I will hug them and tell them, you didn't say it. It is my enemy that said it. The one I, I fight and war against is the devil. For you, you don't. If you said it, you will not come to say you're sorry. It doesn't change my opinion about you. You have only passed through a lecture to recognize that you don't come from my religion. Come on, let's go ahead. I was preaching in Nigeria in minister's conference. And when I was preaching, a madman ran into the church. I kept on preaching until the madman came into the eye. And I commanded him, sit down, and he fell to the ground. And I kept on teaching the ministers. Because the spirit of madness or the devil or demonic spirit have no authority when God is speaking. 
When I finished preaching, I commanded the evil spirit to come out of him, and off he went to the floor like a dead man. I left two hours after, after the break, I came back. When I came back, the man had come back to his senses. He was clothed. Pastor Dakwa was there. Then I asked for questions from the ministers, and two ministers came out, and they knelt down before me with tears. Apostle, Apostle, please forgive us. I said, I pick up my spirit, you are deliverance minister. They said, yes, we are many here. <clears throat> we came to this meeting because we want to antagonize you. We have been following you on television, and we say to ourselves, you do not believe in deliverance. And they said, but today we recognize what you are saying is a deliverance method that is not like Christ. Where did he get it from? Jesus said, with a word, I cast out devils. And they said, we were in your meeting yesterday when we saw demons flying out of people in the crusade ground, and you took no notice of it. Why should I take notice of what Jesus is doing by himself? Now we are here today. See this madman now in his right senses. You didn't fast and pray over this one. I said to them, before you spoke, you have been forgiven. We have to follow the pattern of Jesus in everything we do. People must not be pushed to fall down because they don't need to fall down. You don't spit on people for them for power to be transmitted because there's no way in the Bible that tells you to do so. We have to follow the pattern of Jesus Christ to let her die. Only him can be glorified. Listen to me, therefore. Let me talk to you last about lust. All these things are ended with idolatry, which is what? So it's not only bowing down to graven images that is idolatry. A person who is living in sexual immorality life, you are an idol worshiper. A person who is impure is an idol worshiper. Those who lost after others are idol worshippers. Evil desires, you are idol worshiper. And if you are a greedy man, you are idol worshiper. That's why I said at the beginning of my lecture, it's not possible for a person who do that to say he's born again. You are just not born again. The greatest mistake you can do is to die in that. Lost. Now listen to me, ministers. Every one of you. A man must not lust after a woman. A woman must not lust after a man. In this church, I told you, if a man goes to a woman, you must first size up the woman you are going to. If a woman has spent her time to be educated, to be a class, a man who had not attained anything in life, going to such woman is stupid. I repeat myself. Birds of the same feathers flock together. If anybody believed that such should happen, that person himself is foolish. Let me say this to you. A woman who has spent her life to educate herself and to become somebody in life if anybody wished that woman to marry a useless man, that person would be useless because you have sown a wrong seed. Will you pray for your daughter to go and marry a useless man? So if you wish that to another person's daughter, you are going to reap fruits. If a man goes to a woman, a woman must not just say yes, you must size the man up. When I told my father I want to marry my wife, after knowing us for five years, my wife said, go bring your passbook. <laughs> in those days, we, we, we give money in the post office. They, they, they will put stamp on your passbook. Uh, Federal Savings Bank. So when I gave it to my father, my father said, you want to marry. <laughs> in this house, do you pay rent? I said, no. In this house, do you pay light bill? I said, no. He said to me now, the money you have in your passport cannot feed you, cannot pay rent for a house, and you want to bring a woman to your life. Get away from my front! <laughs> I had to work with two left legs. <laughs> so my father called me. He said, come boy, if you want to marry, go and rent a flat. Do work, work, save real money, and go and rent a flat. He said in your flat, furnish it. I will come and expect it. You will furnish everywhere. The bed you will buy, the chairs you will buy. If you can't afford to buy air condition, buy fan. 
Because I can't allow you to marry a woman and smoke her to death. Not in my house. <laughs> and he said to me, you must buy, if you cannot buy a car, buy a motorcycle. Because you have to be carrying your wife somewhere. <laughs> I said, yes, daddy. So as a young soviet, I went into the bush. I began to make money, make money. When I have enough money, I say, I, daddy, I want to marry. He said, show me your passbook. So I can bring my passbook. He said, you are talking sense now. He called my wife and told my wife, when you marry my son, my son must provide for you. <laughs> he said he must give you chop money. He said, he's here, I'm telling him before you. Make sure you take money from him. Every month, he said, I give their mother money to provide for this house. The son I give back to must provide for his house. How can a jobless man go to a working class that I want to marry him? It's foolish. Because he's lost him after what is not. If a man says to a woman, I'm sorry I can't marry you, does that, should that cause the woman to go mad? So then, then, or a man, Will it cause the man to go mad? Loss is what can cause such to happen. As I say to men, you can't just be going to one woman today and then another woman tomorrow and then you are trying and locking the church. If you think this is the person your heart draws to, you must pray, hear God. Discuss it with your pastor before you make a move. For you girls, is there an age to marry? No. The older you become before you marry, the better marriage you will keep. Many have rushed in, but they can't rush out. Woe to the parents who tell their daughters or sons, where is your wife? Where is your husband? And put pressure on them to take wrong decision. You will leave your old age in tears. No child in this church must obey a pressure for marriage. Neither must a woman going about locking boys in corners. No man should marry such a woman. Lost. A woman must not be displaying herself over men. No, that is lost. Neither can a man be going to try one and try the other. That is lost. If a man stretches his hand to a woman that is not married and touch you wrongly, that man should be reported to me because that is assault. I'm a law student. I will indict him. Put him where he belongs. If somebody has to go to jail to learn, to jail shall he go? <laughs> oh, yes. To jail shall he go? Maybe it is jail that will teach him lesson. A man must respect the dignity of a woman. And a woman must respect her dignity. A woman must not sell herself cheap. Neither must a man make himself foolish. Loss is idolatry. A married man, what are you doing with another woman? If you see a woman that work a kind of work outside, why don't you go to home and tell your wife that this is the work I saw? Walk it. Why should the work of an adulterer enter your head? That work is not genuine. That work is illegitimate. Why should you be captivated, my son, by her? The Bible says, little do you know it will cost your life and all that you have. I told them in New Cross, if I see a work, and my wife haven't worked that work, I tell my wife that I saw this work and I work it for her. And my wife will tell me the name of that work. My children will be there when I tell my wife, say, work that work for me. <laughs> Are you with me now? If my wife worked the work for me, finish. <laughs> finish. The woman that has been working before you all these years, it is possible for you to forget that she worked that work. And you see one useless woman just making her neck like, like a snake. 
And before you know it, you are following him by the spirit that lives in her. By the spirit that lives in her. Eh? Eh? Until an arrow eats your liver. The Bible says drink water in your own system. If a woman is looking around a married man, everybody should shout and cry. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> Ship is sinking. Confront her there. And tell her you are going beyond your boundary. If she will not greet you, report her to me. I will not spear that woman. I will not. And you wives, protect your husband. If you see a man, a woman walking womanously around your husband, tell that woman that I'm here. <laughs> yeah, tell her I'm here. If you don't understand me, I just spoke in tongues. I just spoke in tongues. Are you with me now? Men should use their wife as their protector. A married man must not hug another woman on her breast. Proverbs 6 says so. Listen to me. If a married man wants to hug a woman, you hug them at a distance. Hello, somebody. And if somebody wants to grab you, anyhow, push her very well. But don't let her fall. Because of the law. Hello, somebody. Do you know something Satan set us up? Satan tried to destroy us. After we have prayed, he waits for us at the corner to enlist us among idol worshippers. Have not known that the Bible says those who do these things are idolaters? Listen to me, therefore. Lost, if you have it, take it away from your diary, it takes you to hell. Someone said to me that some women dress to kill. If you are a life giver, how can you see a killer? <laughs> if a woman opens her nakedness publicly, he should not do anything to a person who is normal. What are you looking at? Do you not have it at home? So if you have your own wife and your wife has breasts, then what should the breast of another woman make you lose your head. Jesus says even if you conceive it in your mind, you have done it. Listen to me, therefore. I'm saying this to you because Satan set traps for humanity. For those who are outside, he controls. But those who are inside, he tries to take you over. And you and I have to say no to the devil. We are not born again to be destroyed. We are saved to be saved. New life in Christ. Let's stand up together. We're going to lift up our voices unto God and pray for one another. That the Lord will enable us to live according to the precepts of the word. Shall we begin to pray in the name of Jesus? <clears throat> Tell God, help me to live according to the precepts of your word. Tell the Lord, help me not to betray you. Give me the strength. Pray for the brothers and the sisters around you. Father, help us to live according to your precepts. Enable us as God's people not to disappoint you. The life of godliness is great. Deliver us from the traps of Satan, from the snare of the fowler. Tell the Lord... In this perilous time, help me not to be wasted. Satan has wasted the lives of many people. There are some of us who are going through times of tribulation. Maybe in your marriage. Pray that God will intervene in those marriages that Satan is causing turbulence. The Bible says the wife, the body of a woman is not hers but her husband's. The Bible says that the body of the man does not belong to him but belongs to her husband. To his, to his wife. We're going to pray that God help us. Help us to be sanitized in you. Would you like to be part of a vibrant church in the midst of beautiful, awe-inspiring surroundings? 
Christ Faith Tabernacle at the CFT Cathedral Woolwich is now open for all. Apostle Alfred Williams, apostolic leader to churches around the globe, warmly invites you to come and be part of this incredible move of God. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., 186 Power Street, Woolwich, London. In our beautiful, recently refurbished cathedral, we are seeing miracles happen, people healed, needs are met, lives are transformed. The Word of God is preached with power through Apostle Alfred Williams. I want you to know this, that there is a God in heaven who has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and by Him, anyone who believes in Him, carry the very authority of God which, with which He created the heavens and the earth. Jesus said, freely you receive and freely give. I want to say this to you, stop going around to people, kneel down where you are, talk to the God who created the heavens and the earth in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and you will receive your miracle now. And be sure not to miss our two life-changing events, Overcomers Night Vigil, Hear the Voice of God, Receive Life-Changing Teaching, Be Lifted Through Dynamic Worship. Become an Overcomer on the last Friday of every month at 7 p.m. And also come and celebrate with us at our exciting monthly Victory Nights. Receive your breakthrough. Be empowered to win. Come and claim your victory on the first, second and third day of every month. Whatever age, nationality or background you are from, there is something very special for you at the Christ Faith Tabernacle Cathedral Woolwich. Every Sunday at 10 a.m., 186 Power Street, Woolwich, London, SE18 6NL.